Hey everybody, this is Stephanie from Apex Languages with another Words of the Week. Actually, this week is going to be idioms. Lots of idioms, including cabin fever. So what does cabin fever mean? Well, it's related to bored to tears. Another idiom, an adjective idiom, and that means just extremely bored, really, really bored. So bored that you want to cry. Not necessarily that you are crying, but, you know, just the idea is that you've got nothing to do. Uh, my sentence reads, that was the worst board meeting ever. Two hours listening to the boss rambling on about nothing, I was bored to tears. Uh, a synonymous idiom is bored to death, if you want to sound a little bit more extreme. Bored to death. Again, extremely bored. Uh, that was the worst board meeting ever. Two hours listening to the boss rambling on about nothing. I was bored to death. Okay, so it's used exactly the same way. Uh, you know, basically has the same amount of strength. It just sounds a little uh, more extreme. Okay, I am so bored that my my brain just exploded. <laughs> Maybe I just dropped dead from boredom. Hopefully you're not bored to tears already. Now, before we talk about the idiom cabin fever itself, I thought it would be a good idea to make sure you know what a cabin is. Okay, let's start by practicing the word. Repeat after me. Cabin. 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 What part of speech is it? It's a noun. And it means a small house, usually simple and isolated. You should visit me at my cabin up on the lake. It's nothing fancy, but has lots of rustic charm. Do you know what rustic means? Rustic is the antonym, the opposite of urban. Okay, so something that's rustic has to do with nature. It has to do with um, something that is not modern. Not that it's old, but it's much more likely to be built by hands, right? It's much more uh, simple. Yeah, but the focus here is outside of the city, in the country, in the wilderness. Cabins can actually, it says a small house, they can be small, they can have one room, or they can, they can be larger. If you go to a summer camp, you might uh, bunk in a cabin that is designed to fit 30 people. And so a small house, that's not necessarily the focus of the word cabin, Really more, it's about being isolated. A, a, a building that's out in the wilderness, it's usually of simpler build. You know, it's, it's not gonna be some sort of big palace with lots of expensive things. It's gonna be simple, it's going to be cheap. But, you know, it should be comfortable. Cabins are usually, you well, know, comfortable. Um, so it doesn't have much of a negative uh, stigma to it. Okay, again though, the focus is that it's rustic. It's out in the country, out in the woods. There's another important definition for cabin that you should be aware of. And it, it, it grew from this original meaning. Okay, a small enclosed space for temporary habitation, such as on a train, plane, or ship. So, um, for example, when you're on a plane, that big area that everyone's sitting in, whether you're first class or, or business class or, uh, you know, general, general class there, that area is the cabin, which is different than the cockpit. The captain sits in the cockpit and then the passengers are in the cabin. Same thing on a train or a ship. Okay, that's where the passengers are. Um, now, on a ship, for example, you're much more likely, uh, it's, it's not a big open area, it's more likely to be uh, sort of like a little mini hotel room, right? But it's a small enclosed space uh, where the passengers go. Uh, train, it can be either the big area or the small, but you know, it's, it's where the passengers are. So I have two sentences here. The cruise was wonderful, but our cabin was tiny. Uh, and so that's, that's obviously on a ship, cruise ship. In the case of a sudden drop in cabin pressure, oxygen, oxygen masks will drop from the ceiling. Have you ever heard that before? Uh, 
in a, on a plane, actually, you've got uh, what's called the crab cabin crew, your flight attendants, another word for them is the cabin crew, because of the people who work in the cabin. And so this is one, this is part of the safety demonstration. You will probably hear cabin quite a lot if you listen to uh, what the captain does say in those announcements. In English, we have lots of words for different types of houses. I'm going to show you a couple other ones and rank them as far as tiny and rough versus huge and fancy. The worst you could have is a hovel. A hovel is four walls, something covering it that may or may not have holes in it. Hovels are terrible. That's where the poorest of the poor live. Shack is a slight improvement. I would call the picture here at the bottom a shack. Um, you know, it focuses very small and um, been very poor kept. It's falling apart, but it's a little better than the hovel. A cabin, again, is usually small, is very isolated, but most of the time it's better maintained than a shack would be. A shack has uh, bugs and rats and lots of holes. A cabin at least is cozy. Even cozier still is the cottage. The cottage is less likely to be in the middle of the woods, but it's about the similar size of a cabin. So it's on the, it's a cottage is small, but it's nice. It's pleasant. House, that's our neutral term. Okay, that's a normal house. A chalet. The, the closer you get to French, the fancier it gets. A, a chalet is sort of a lodge. Okay, somewhere that you go on vacation. Uh, like a cabin, but really, really nice. <laughs> okay, so maybe a bit on the smaller side, but it's, uh, um, but it is is just a lot fancier. A villa is big. Once you get to a villa, um, it's the house itself is sort of a medium, but you've got lots of land and everything is very fancy um, and expensive. A mansion is a big house, uh, lots of rooms, you know, big gardens, everything's expensive. And then of course a palace. Palace is where the king lives, right? Or, or someone who is very rich. Finally, cabin fever. So it is an idiom and it is a noun. It's used as a noun. A restless boredom, anxiety, and or depression due to long isolation in a confined space. So cabin fever is not an actual medical term, but it refers to people basically going crazy because they're bored, because they're stuck in a small area. Um, cabin fever, I believe the term started on ships when sailors would uh, be away from home for months or, or years and they just got sick of being on that boat. Um, the, if you ever watch the Muppets, the Muppets Treasure Island, they make a whole song about cabin fever. It's delightfully hilarious. Um, but because they're on a ship and they've been sailing and there's nothing and they're bored. Okay. Uh, nowadays, you're much more likely to have cabin fever at home. Uh, usually at the end of winter, people get cabin fever and they're all excited when spring comes and they can go outside. Uh, right now, lots of cabin fever because everyone's stuck in their houses. And so, you know, you're bored and you're bored and the, the restlessness. Restless means that you want to move, you want to do something, but you can't. And so then that creates anxiety, stress, or you're just depressed. You know, there's no hope. You're going to be stuck in your house forever. You won't. This will get better. Don't be depressed. Okay. But it is natural to be anxious, to be stressed because uh, from boredom. So this is cabin fever. Uh, it's not the same thing as claustrophobia, although that is a good word to know. Claustrophobia is fear, an extreme fear, a phobia of confined spaces. Um, but someone with claustrophobia, if they're stuck inside, they would have an even more extreme, um, uh, you know, more extreme version of these sort of symptoms. 
Okay. Stuck at home for the past week, I'm starting to go a little crazy. I definitely have cabin fever. Or you could say, I definitely am getting cabin fever. Okay, either you have it or you're going to get it. Now, a similar term is stir crazy. Difference is that this one is an adjective. Stir refers to the jail. Okay, being in jail, being in prison, where you're in that little cell. So again, restlessly bored, anxious, and or depressed. Notice how it's an adjective, not a, a noun. You don't have boredom, you are bored due to long isolation in a confined space. And so imagine being a prisoner who's been stuck in jail for years and years. They go, they, they go crazy, right? They're just, they're stressed or depressed because they need to get out. Okay, uh, another a synonym for stir crazy, crazy, stir crazy is antsy. This uh, refers to your, like an ant. Okay, and you know ants, they're always moving. They're always moving. And so if you're antsy, you're anxious. Okay, you're moving. You, you, you're sort of moving. You've got so much energy that you're, you're moving, you're trembling, but there's nothing for you to do. Finally, my sentence, stuck at home for the past week. I'm starting to go a little crazy. I definitely am stir crazy, or I definitely am going stir crazy. So if you remember with cabin fever, I have cabin fever because it's a noun, but stir crazy. I am stir crazy. Uh, I get cabin fever. I go stir crazy. I have one more idiom for you. Climb the walls. Okay, this is a verb to become tense and frantic, especially due to long isolation in a confined space. So you can see here, same basic meaning. You're still crazy because you're stuck at home, but it's about becoming or, or being uh, tense, okay? Tense, stressed, frantic. Frantic means desperate. And so you've got all this anxiety, all this stress, and you're, you are so close to just breaking. And you're climbing the walls is describing the, that you're getting to that point where you are just about to explode because you need to get out of the house. So, stuck at home for the past week, I'm climbing the walls. I'm in a rotten mood, snapping at everyone. And if I have to do one more puzzle, I think I'm gonna scream. Please don't scream. I've got some practice for you to help keep you sane in these trying times. What are you doing at home to keep from catching cabin fever? Write a little paragraph, okay, and tell me what kind of things are you doing to keep from going crazy, to keep from climbing the walls? Uh, try to use some of these words in there. Okay, write about this and then write about something else. Keep a journal, right? The, the best way to keep sane, the best way to keep from being bored, keep practicing your English. Find some time. Even if you can't physically go to a class or anything like that, find ways to practice your English. It'll give you something to do and it'll keep you out of trouble. I'll leave you to get to it. Good luck. Thank you as always for watching my videos. Find more at apexlanguages.com. Stay safe, stay healthy, and have a great day.